We the lazy declare that we will recline when we feel inclined. And yes, we feel inclined. We answered our kids' questions all day. It's our time to prioritize. No priorities. Why? Because. We put in back-to-back -back doubles. So now we'll be putting in extra OT right here. We've checked off our to-do list. Now we're checking off our to-don't list. We the lazy are taking back lazy. By getting comfy on our Lazy Boy furniture. Lazy Boy. Long live the lazy. I'm Chief Meteorologist Dennis Phillips. Heat, still the hot topic of weather conversation, right? Just smashed the previous record for rainfall in Tampa. It's still a very nice day. We've got some clouds out there, even a couple of sprinkles as another front rolls through the area. Most of us wake up to sunshine and then very warm temperatures in the afternoon. Our temperatures, they're going up and they're staying up. Really nice forecast, especially if you're planning on going to the beach or the pool. Rain chances very slim. It's another beautiful day in store. It's going to bring us a very high chance of storms. Some isolated showers across the area. Mother Nature likes to remind us that it isn't set by a calendar. So we're always on it for you just in case things begin to pop. Streaming from the ABC Action Weather Center in Studio A, this is Dennis Phillips Live. Sponsored by Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries. Long live the lazy. How you doing, everybody? Thursday evening, Thursday edition of Dennis Phillips Live. Thanks for stopping by. The weather is pretty quiet. You see behind me, though, there is an area shaded in yellow with the new drought numbers that has not seen abnormally dry conditions in, geez, maybe like 10 a month, 10 or 11 months. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. I, I will tell you, first thing I want to jump on here, I saw Dominique said that she went blueberry picking today. That is a brilliant idea. We did that last year. I didn't know it was blueberry season yet, and, and it's just that I didn't notice. So how were the blueberries? Were there lots of them, or was it a little early on? Because I took Ryan last year, my daughter, and she loved it, absolutely loved blueberry picking. And they also had a place over Starkey Ranch, kind of close to where I live, where they had blueberry, blackberry, and strawberry as well, and they kind of had them all. So we went there last year and just loved it, had, had a blast. This weekend is going to be hot, though. It is going to be upper 80s to around 90 degrees with high dew points as well. I'm a little under the weather. I feel I'm not sick, but I drank a protein shake about an hour and a half ago, and it did not strike me well. So, uh, <laughs> so I'm going to do my best to just get through. I will tell you about a month ago, Paul Legrone was doing the news. The trooper that he is, he was like, oh, my stomach's not feeling well. And ironically enough, it's after drinking a protein shake. But I was talking to him during like 5.45 before weather was on. And I'm like, Paul, you, you don't look good. He's like, yeah, yeah, I don't feel good. And he just wasn't, you know, when we had our little crosstalk at the, at the desk going into the news, and you, you normally talk about whatever, you know, sometimes happy talk, sometimes, you know, me, I'll stir the pot. We'll talk about the stories. Pause, you can just tell he just was not in the mood for talking. And literally, he left the set at 5.55, walked off the set, went in and threw up, and was sick for like two days. So that doesn't sound, I mean, I, I've had food poisoning once in my life. True story. And we'll get into weather, but there's not a lot of weather to talk about, so you guys know kind of where we're going here. But, um, and Dominique, I want you to tell me where you went blueberry picking. But I had food poisoning one time in my life. I was, living, I was living in Gainesville. I was working at TV 20 in Gainesville. And I went to a fried chicken establishment. I will not say its name, but it's a famous one. And about two hours after I had that, I got as violently ill as I've ever been in my life. I felt so, I was literally green. I mean, they say you feel green. I looked green. I'm laying on the bathroom floor. I'm literally just laying on the cool bathroom floor. And I was so sick, I wondered if I needed to go to the hospital to get a shot or something, right? I didn't know, because I'd never had food poisoning before. So I picked up the phone and I called the hospital, because I knew some people worked at the hospital, and I called the ER. And, I, and a, guy, a nurse answered, a guy answered. I'm like, I got a question for you. He's like, yeah. He goes, I go, if I was your bowling buddy 
and I told you that I got some bad chicken and it made me incredibly ill, would you tell me to come into the hospital and get a shot or something? Or would you tell me just to suck it up and deal with it? He's like, yeah, I tell you to suck it up and deal with it. So that's what I did. I, I laid on the bathroom floor for six hours. I was so sick. But then, you know, a day later, I was OK. I don't feel that sick right now. But I don't feel great. I mean, the, the, protein, the protein shake was, was not good for me. Nevertheless, we muddle through, don't we? That's what we do, right? I mean, imagine if there was a hurricane coming. You can't get sick. I, like, like Jesse Ventura said in Predator, I ain't got time to bleed. I ain't got time to be sick. So anyway, Jules, how you doing? Hey, the bolts with the win, and I'm sure you noticed the Washington Capitals made it to the last playoff spot. They will be taking on the New York Rangers while the the Panthers will be taking on the Bolts. The stinking Panthers, as a lot of Bolts fans like to call them, will be taking on the Tampa Bay Lightning. First game puck drop, I think 1230 on Sunday afternoon. And then the Caps play the Rangers shortly thereafter. Both games on ESPN. I don't know if ABC has the finals or not. They have in the previous in previous years at times, so I do not know. Cindy from Venice, how are you? Dominique, I'm going to scroll down. Tell me where you went blueberry picking and tell me if, they, if, the, if it was a little early because I like the blueberries a little on the um, raw side, like not ripe. I like them a little when they get that little red tartness to it as opposed to when they're a little bit long and they're soft. And to me, I don't like those as much. That's just me. I like them when they're a little sour, more sour. Uh, Denise, how you doing? Good to see you. We have definitely started chit chat. We are going to talk drought and tropics and, and whatnot. But we have some time, and tonight is my treat night for ABC Action News. I will tell you, I was, um, I was borderline remiss, but luckily the folks at Hole in One Donuts in Tarpon Springs, I texted them last night, and I'm like, hey, can I buy a couple dozen donuts maybe with treat night on them or ABC Action News? And they didn't get the message until like 1 o'clock this afternoon, and they messaged me back, and they're like, sure, stop on by. So I frantically picked up my treat night, but I did, I did make it in time, because you know what? We've had one person bring veggie platters for treat night, and they will never hear the end of it. <laughs> As they should. Come on. Who thinks veggie platters are a treat? I mean, they might be tasty, but they're not a treat. Carrie, how you doing? Good to see you. Englewood's in the house with Sandy. We have got uh, Tessie. Good to see you, Tessie. Bridget made it. As a Bridget, you're not at a Toto concert tonight? Well, miracles never cease. I can't believe that. Newport Richie's in the house again with Carrie. Riverview checking in with Courtney. Palm Harbor and Estelle. How you doing, Estelle? Ryan, good to see you as always. Steve, my buddy, nice to see you. Oh, you were at Starkey. I just, it's all, the, all of them just scrolled through it. I missed everybody. See, my messages do that on here. I only see five or six at a time, and then they just go bloop, and I, I lose everybody. So everybody who said hello before Justin, I cannot see you. I apologize. Justin in Melbourne, but Dominique said lots of them at Starkey, so I will be going there this weekend. Lisa, how's it going? Sandy, Sandy also agrees Starkey is the best. Nancy in Clearwater. Amanda, good to see you. Home Assassin with Karen. Tessie in Clearwater. Sandy with the green emoji with the bleh. <laughs> Nights are getting warmer, Betty. Yes, Betty Davis. Is that really your name? Is it really Betty Davis? Because I know a million times in your life you've heard, you know, great eyes. But I wonder, if that, is that really, truly your name? Uh, Adkins shakes will sometimes hit you wrong, so says Mary. This was not an Adkins shake. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, Starkey Blueberry Fields are not for long. They're building housing. Oh, no. That's tragic. That is Awful. That's the price we that's the price we pay of growth because that part of Pasco is exploding. I mean, it is. I mean, a lot of us know when you lived here earlier, there was nothing up there. Now there's Trinity and there's Starkey and there's they're building everywhere. There's already got to be like 25 Starbucks in that area. So uh, Debbie in Spring Hill, how you doing? We have got Rhonda. Nice to see you, Vivian. Vivian wants to know if we have rain. All right. We are getting into the rain discussion in just a second. Cold front, yes, but not really. Yes and no. Rub some dirt on it. That's right. Letty, so funny. So my daughter had a softball tournament in Ocala last weekend. You know, they're eight, under 10, 10 year olds and under. So they're little kids, right? And one girl got hit either in, the, I can't, I was on the foot. I, yeah, yeah. She got hit in the foot 
with a pitched ball, right? <laughs> this is great. <laughs> the umpire came over, grabbed some dirt, and threw it on her shoe. <laughs> it was awesome. And she started laughing. So she got the reference. Because, I mean, I think some people would have been like, dude, why are you throwing dirt on my shoe? But she got the reference to rub some dirt on it. It was awesome. <laughs> it was the best part of the day. Uh, Lakeland, Penelope, how you doing? Good to see you. Um, anyway, so let's get into some weather. Thank you, Maria. Yep, Cooch, yep, Cooch got the 100 assists last night. That is correct, Jules. You, I know you know that. We were talking about that earlier. So, all right, let's go ahead and, and just jump right in. To, boy, I'm missing all these hellos. I apologize profusely, my folks. Um, Etta and Dunedin. Yeah, because it just they just zip scroll right through. Tina Marie and Oldsmar, any rain for Lacanto? Let's talk about the rain. Let's talk about the forecast. All right. So we're gonna start with the drought conditions. Hello in Oldsmar again, Tina. And Sheila, how are you? Good to see you. Good evening as well. So this is something we have not seen for a long time. The abnormally dry is on the east side of the state. And that's kind of interesting too, because Highlands County got more rain than anybody else in our area last summer with that west to east flow. So all the rain was on the east coast. Matter of fact, all the rain was right where that yellow is. So over the last couple of months, Mother Nature has decided to at least play fair and give the central and eastern counties less rain and inland and coastal areas more rain. Thank you, Patricia. Appreciate it. So that's where it is. And I do want to talk a little bit about the whole the water situation, OK? Because look, we are not going to get much rain for the next two months, flat out. We're just not. And we never do. And there's nothing unusual about it. So I would expect those drought numbers to start showing up yellow in our area eventually, and maybe even a moderate drought before the rainy season historically kicks in in the middle of June. If we get our average summertime rain, we got nothing to worry about. El Nino did us a favor. And exactly, if you remember last June, we were talking about El Nino, that it was going to bring a wet pattern in the winter. So we nailed that. We might not be able to get the weather right tomorrow, but we got that six month forecast down pat. So we got all that rain that we needed. So we're not in a drought. But remember, we had all that rain. So there's a lot of foliage everywhere. Now, some areas are still dry. Anna Maria's sent me a picture. What are you talking about green? It's still dry here. I get it. But overall, we are much greener than we typically are in April and May because of all the rain we had. So when we will dry out, which we are going to the next two months, those fire dangers are going to return. Even if we're not looking at a drought condition, we will have abnormally high fire brush fire dangers because all that greenery is not going to get rain. We got the sun that's super intense right now and getting more intense until June 21st. And you're not getting a lot of rain, so you're getting a lot of evaporation with the heating. So that gets everything crunchy and there will be fire dangers. So it doesn't matter whether we have drought conditions or not. We will be in fire season for most of May, no, for all of May and for some of June. And then hopefully mid-June things crank in like they're supposed to and we get our afternoon and evening storms, unlike what we had last year. But it is still something to remember. All right. OK, so rain, nothing. And nor will there be anything until next Monday. It is going to rain next Monday for part of the area, and I think the best chances will be north of I-4. April showers are up north, Lenny. That is not a Florida thing. Let me see where Lenny is from. Let's see. Let me go ahead and click on Lenny's name and see if it says where you're from, because he's right. You know, April showers bring May flowers, but that ain't a Florida thing. So that's just a, that's an up north. That's like seeing the first robin of the year, you know, which is supposed to signal spring up north. Let me click on Lenny. Lenny's from Hudson. He's from Palm Harbor, but I wonder if he grew up up north. That's my question. Or if you just knew the saying and you're just like, or you're just trying to stir the pot, which I'm okay with that as well, Lenny. Lenny's from Hudson. I am totally okay with pot stirring. I encourage it for that matter. It keeps things spicy. All right, there you go. Temperatures right now. Today was a perfect example of what that bay breeze and gulf breeze can do. Look at those inland spots. Upper 80s to near 90 degrees. Coastal areas mid to upper 70s. A solid 10 degrees cooler along the coast or near the bay, near the bay or the gulf, as opposed to inland areas. Because the bay breeze or the gulf breeze was unable to make it inland. 
That's why areas around Plant City hit 91 degrees today and 88 in Lakeland and 88 in Avon Park and Winter Haven. And yet lower 80s from Sarasota, Siesta Key, Venice, Bradenton, St. Pete, anywhere in Pinellas County. Low 80s, Crystal River. The farther inland you go, the hotter it will be. Peggy's from Long Island, but lives in Florida now. Born and bred, Lenny says, so you just know the saying. I get it. I do not know the 23 ingredients of Dr. Pepper, Priscilla. <laughs> I do not. This might be an urban legend. I may be totally wrong, but I could have sworn I remember somebody saying that there was prune juice in Diet Dr. Pepper. You'd think I would know it as much as I drink this stuff. I don't know why I think that, but somebody told me that at some point in time. It may be an urban legend, but I seem to, I seem to remember that. All right. Ah, oh, Mark wants to know when the rule number seven beer releases. Mark, ask and ye shall receive. Memorial Day weekend, Saturday, 3 p.m., Crooked Thumb, Safety Harbor. My daughter's softball team will be there, fundraising. I will be there with brand new rule number seven stuff. New logos, new tumblers, first time you will be able to get them in person and without shipping fees will be at the Crooked Thumb that Saturday. Mark is there every year, always likes the beer. They have a roll number seven pale ale. And then we are going to have another meet and greet in the month of June over at Lukens in Dunedin, where there will be signage apparently. I don't know what that signage will be, but apparently I will be there and saying hi and they'll be selling the four packs because it's a very limited release. You guys know this, they sell out really fast, but I will be there to autograph the cans, to say hi, to do whatever you want, take selfies at Memorial Day weekend, that Saturday, three o'clock at the Crooked Thumb in Safety Harbor and at Lucan's date to be determined, TBD, um, on sometime in, it was a blast, Dale. It really is a lot of fun. The Cricket Thumb is an amazing place. It's a huge venue. They've got outside seating. They've got inside seating. They have all these great beers. And we just have people, we just sit and talk for hours on end and talk weather and get pictures and have a really good time. And it's a lot of DPL folks, but a lot of other folks who love the beer because the Cricket Thumb is awesome. Okay, I'm not seeing what? Uh, wait a minute. Oh, you are seeing Toto. I, yes, Bridget, I know that because I saw you posted that they're going to be at Ruth Eckerd Hall. They're going to be at Ruth, Ruth Eckerd Hall coming up. Maybe not next week. I thought that was in early May. So let's call it as we see it. Bridget has an obsession with Toto and she loves that group. You know, the group they sang Africa. Remember back in the 80s? You know, I bless the rains down in Africa. You, you know the group. But she loves them. So they're going to be at Ruth Eckerd Hall. Oh, and for the Swifties out there, my daughter being one, midnight tonight, Taylor Swift drops her new, uh, her new album. It's Tortured Poets something? Tortured, is that it? Tortured Poets? It's not Tortured Poets Society, is it? Because that's Dead Poets Society. I don't know. But that's coming out tonight at midnight, so my daughter cannot wait. All right, let's get back to weather. So, I'm not hating. I am not hating, Bridget. I am merely noting the obsession. Society, Tortured Poets Society, that is it. Thank you, Jules. Do we have a running gag with my family? They say that I'm a Swifty. I'm not a Swifty, and I'll tell you why. Look, I like pop music. I've always liked pop music. All my life, I've been a pop music guy. And most of Taylor Swift's songs are very catchy, and I like them. I do. When I went to the concert, I brought my daughters to the concert. I still had a great time. But I'm not a Swifty because I'm not the least bit interested in Taylor Swift's life or anything that goes on in that avenue. I mean, I respect great businesswoman. I'm not dissing her at all. I just have no interest in her life. I say that a Swifty is someone who's interested not just in her music, but is interested in the facets of her life that bring on that said music. So we have a running thread with all my kids, including today saying, oh, dad's counting down to the release of the album. No. Just saying, I think a Swifty is someone who, obs not obsesses, who's interested in the life and times of Taylor Swift, not just likes the music. That is my story, and I'm sticking to it, even though my kids mock me and say that that's just not true. All right, Priscilla, we're getting to the rain. <laughs> I promise. 
<laughs> Lenny knows squirrel. All right, 81 and mostly cloudy right now. We hit 84. It's exactly where we should be. We dropped down to 65. No, we dropped down to 70. 65 is normal. Not a drop of rain through Sunday for our area. But I want you to look at something in Futurecast. This, yeah, he lives in Apollo Beach, Wanda. Matter of fact, Jameson Euler told me that Taylor Swift's father lives in the same neighborhood that he lives in. That is what Jameson said and said that there are times he sees him walking around and he's walking the dog. And he said it was Thanksgiving, I think, a couple of years ago where a giant entourage of SUVs showed up at his house and that was Taylor was there for Thanksgiving. So that is, that is what he said. $800 bill, Priscilla? Oh, no. My electric bill is $1,500 in the winter, in the summer. Three years ago, it happened out of the blue. It was never more than $550 in the summer. Then all of a sudden, boom, it went up to $1,500 from June through November every single summer. And then when we have all our Christmas lights, it goes down to four or $500. But go figure. I don't know why, but it's just a debacle. Yep, $1,500. <laughs> Swifty Knowledge 101. Okay. All right, Nicole. I'm guilty in that. However, that was because James <laughs> keep flipping back and forth. Because Jameson Euler told me, and I'll go one step further. Jameson Euler is a Swifty because he went to a concert wearing a Jake Gyllenhaal, Gyllenhaal shirt with a little red circle and a cross through it. Because apparently the song All Too Well, the 10-minute version that everybody who's a Taylor Swift fan knows about and interested in the background of it, is about Jake Gyllenhaal, allegedly, supposedly. So he wore a shirt with that on there. So that, to me, by definition, is a Swifty, as opposed to me, who just likes the songs. Okay? All right. Yes, $1,500 a month, Donna. <laughs> Jules, that's what my kids say, too. $1,500 a month. It's absolutely ridiculous, and I don't know why. <laughs> Lisa's like, weather? Look, Lisa, <laughs> Pam, <laughs> oh, Jamie, oh, no, no, no. Jamie, you did not say that. I promise you did not say that. <laughs> All right, you guys let Jamie know what, what, what happens when it says stick to weather, okay? Just, I'm just going to, I'm going to take the high road and let you guys handle it, okay? All right, so anyway, there is a look at Futurecast as we go through, no, I just can't help myself. Look, if you just want weather, this is not your, this is not yours. It's not your thing. Because I go on every different tangent. Sometimes we talk about what you talk about. Sometimes we talk about what I, if there's a hurricane coming, pr I promise you, you'll get more weather than you could ever hope for or dream about, Okay. But when it's quiet and there's no weather to talk about other than a few showers on Monday, this is what you get, Jamie. <laughs> okay? And if it ain't your cup of tea, and I get it. I get it. Some people don't like the crosstalk. If it's not, then it's just not your thing. Okay. So, here we go. Let's continue. Let us move forward. All right. This takes us through Friday. Now look over on the East Coast. A couple of showers try to pop up along an East Coast sea breeze boundary. Now I kind of doubt that that's actually going to happen, but that is kind of an indication that we have rising dew points and maybe enough moisture for a shower on the East Coast. I don't expect any rain in our area through the weekend, but look on the East side again. Look at Saturday afternoon. See that? That is another indication that we're getting closer to the summer season. Diane wants to know what my favorite Taylor Swift song is. I like style. I do like style. And I, like, I do like All Too Well. I'm not going to lie. I think it's a brilliant song. I don't care about why she made it, but I, I think it's a, I do. I think it's a great song. Okay. But she's angry in that song. Holy cow. So anyway, there's a look at uh, the probability of rain on Monday. That's what we're talking about here, okay? Charlene, I haven't seen you in forever. How you doing? Nice to see you. Lenny, you got, you got it right. You hit the nail on the head. So when this front comes through on Monday, 
I think north of I-4, there's a little bit better chance of some scattered showers as opposed to south of I-4. But Monday is the only day. It's it. It's it. The only day that you're going to see any rain for the next two weeks. So when you say, let's get to weather, let's, we could do it this way. Okay, let's just pretend it's 730. Hi, welcome to DPL. It's going to rain on Monday. Rain chances at about 20%, about a quarter of an inch of rain. Back to you. Highs in the, highs in the upper 80s to low 90s. 10 seconds. We got 30 minutes. We got lots of time to talk about stuff. Look, we can look at overall rainfall totals and look off to the north. And you see here, here's the next seven day rainfall. That light green for us, that might be a tenth of an inch. That's all we got. All right. So when you hear us discussing lots of other stuff, it's probably because there's not a ton of weather going on. I promise you there will be tons in the summertime. And you will be like, oh, no, he's talking about hurricanes again. Oh, no, what are we going to do? And then you'll be like, don't you wish it was April when we were talking about Taylor Swift? Maybe not. Ocean temperatures. Robin brings up an interesting point. We've been talking about this for a while. So, yes. And we talked about this in the last EPL as well. But I, I will follow up on this because it's a good point. There's all this talk. Oh, the water is the warmest it's ever been out in the Atlantic. And it means there's going to be a gazillion hurricanes. Guys, we've said this once, said it a million times. Statistically speaking, no matter how many hurricanes form in the eastern Atlantic, it has no impact statistically on the number of hurricanes that we get here in west central Florida. There's absolutely no spike in our area of landfalling hurricanes if you get a extreme hurricane season in the Atlantic. There's just not. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that one out because we've only had one major hurricane in the last 103 years. So we are going to get one. We all know eventually it's going to happen. But statistically speaking, we are not in a hurricane prone area in West Central Florida. We're not. The Panhandle is. Southeast Florida is. The Outer Banks of the Carolinas are. But not our area. Typically, we see a tropical storm one out of every four years. No, one out of every three years within 50 miles of the West Coast of Florida. We get a hurricane within 50 miles one every four years, but typically that 50 miles is west of us and moving north toward the panhandle because that's the way storms want to go. Storms will naturally go toward the poles. They go poleward and something has to turn it into our area. That would be a front. How many fronts or troughs do we get in June, July, August or September? Not many. So historically, these storms are going to want to go north and it's going to take something a little more unusual to turn them into us. Now, yes, it's going to happen. We know it. But statistically, a active season does not increase our odds of a landfalling hurricane in West Central Florida. The numbers don't lie. All right. So with the warm water temperature, yes, I suspect there will be a lot of storms out there. With a La Nina, yes, I expect a lot of them will form. Yes, I expect more will form in the Caribbean this year than last year, because if you look at last year right here, practically no. In fact, there were none. No storms popped in the Caribbean. You see that? This is last year. Look at that. Nothing. They were all out here or in here. Okay? So the point is that was because of an El Nino. With a La Nina, you would expect to see more storms forming in the Caribbean. And truthfully, those are the storms that we're more concerned about because a Caribbean storm moves through the Caribbean, will eventually turn north more often than not. At that point, the majority of the time, they go north in the Panhandle or west. But every now and again, if a trough is digging in, they're going to curve in. So that's obviously what we need to keep our eyes on. But I repeat, just because there will be more storms, very likely, not, not likely, it's going to happen. Just because there will be more storms in the Atlantic does not necessarily mean that there are going to be more storms in our area. A quick look at the seven day. Like I already told you, sunny tomorrow, sunny Saturday, sunny Sunday, up near 90 inland, low to mid 80s along the coast. Monday is our chance of rain. The only day we have a chance of rain is Monday. The best chances are north of I-4. North of I-4, 
west of I-75, a 20 to 40% chance, maybe a tenth of an inch of rain, and that would be it. So that's it, folks. It's quiet. We're going to stick around for Facebook for a few minutes. For streamers, thanks for watching. Have a great weekend, and thanks for tuning in to DPL. Okay, so thank you for the updates, guys, for the streamer warnings. That is always appreciated. Um, yeah, time flies when we're chit-chatting, right? I mean, I could sit here and talk about the seven day for 30 minutes, but what interest is that? I mean, look how boring it is. Sunny, 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 sunny every day. One, chance, one day with some rain. Okay. All right. I, Bridget, I am not a person who believes in um, jinxes whatsoever. I am a complete, I am, I, you know what? If a field goal kicker has never missed a field goal for a game winning kick, I'll say he's never going to miss this because I don't have that kind of power. And anybody who thinks you do, come on. Come on. I get it, though. My kids all do. Dad, don't say that. Dad. All right. So there's a look at last year's. Uh, we showed you this map before. This is just a map that shows the timeline of how long it takes for a storm to get from point A to point B. The blue area is about 12 to 14 days. The green area is 6 to 10 days. The red area is 2 to 3 days. It's just kind of basic math on this one. Nothing, nothing earth shattering about it. And there's the rain potential again coming up. Michael, how you doing? Good to see you. So with a lot of weddings planned this weekend, the weather will be great. It will be sunny. It'll be hot. Along the coast, it'll be beautiful. Ryan's games went very well, Priscilla. They played 10 games, I believe. No, no, no. They played eight games and they ended up runner up and got these really nice, really heavy rings that they got to show, which is pretty awesome. I am not a huge travel ball guy yet. I'm going to be the first to admit it. It requires a ton of commitment more than I'm maybe willing to give. Um, if Ryan likes playing, that's awesome. I think some people could easily play rec ball and be just as happy. Travel ball is a massive commitment financially and time wise. So in my opinion, the people who play travel ball are the ones who have dreams and aspiration of playing farther down the road, whether high school or college or whatever. That's just me. So I don't know if that's Ryan. I mean, if she wants to, we support her. But Ryan likes to sing, and Ryan likes to act, and Ryan, you know, she likes a lot of stuff. So I, I don't know if we will be a travel ball family or not. But at this point, we are for at least the next three games. Sherry and Odessa, nice to see you. So. Um, what was the other thing we were talking about? Someone asked, someone asked one more question. Uh, I thought, maybe I missed it. Um, someone had talked about Colorado State. Yeah, yeah, the Colorado State numbers, AccuWeather came out with their numbers today. They were even a little bit more than Colorado State. A lot of people ask, why Colorado State? What? Because Dr. Bill Gray, who came up with the relationship between El Nino and tropical development, used to teach there. That was his department. So they kind of created the hurricane forecasting department for long range climate forecasting um, under Bill Gray. He passed away and Phil Klotzbach took his spot. Great story about Phil Klotzbach. He's taken over that department. I was at a Bahamas hurricane conference decades ago. I don't know how long, 10, 15 years, whatever. And I got in a cab with Phil Klotzbach and his mother. He couldn't have been more than 14 or 15 years old. He, and he was a member of that hurricane conference. He was, Phil Klotzbach is the Doogie Hauser of weather. And I say that in a flattering term because Doogie Hauser obviously was a doctor when he was 13, 14 or 15 or whatever in the TV show. Phil, Phil Klotzbach was a wonderkind. You know, he was, he was the brilliant kid who graduated college when he was young and was, a, was passionate about meteorology. And now he runs the department that Bill Gray founded back in the 80s. So, but just such a great story, because he was. He was like 14, I think he was a 14 year old kid with freckles, red hair, glasses, and his mom was in the cab with him, like, hey, can I get in the cab? And I started talking to him, and you just knew, you just knew that the guy was gonna be world renowned in terms of that, because he just had such a passion for it. And he was really, 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 really super smart. So, Yes, Jules, Ryan Phillips live as well. She, Ryan is, uh, Nicole knows it. Travel ball is no joke. It is not. It is a massive, massive commitment. Cooch for MVP. A lot of people were chanting that yesterday. 
you know, there's some players who've had some really amazing numbers, like the one who also got 100 assists a couple of days earlier and up for 70 goals and just ended up shy of 70 goals. I don't want to mention any names, but yeah, um, there was some... Uh, there was some pretty impressive uh, hockey played this year, but we got the playoffs coming up now. The Bolts are taking on the Panthers on Sunday. Puck drops at 1230, I believe, in Sunrise. The Caps take on the Rangers in Madison Square Garden, 330 later that afternoon. The Rays were victorious today. The NFL draft is coming up. It's quiet tonight, though. There's no NBA. There's only a few couple of ga baseball games left, and there's a few hockey games, so it's kind of boring. So. But it is my treat night. Yes, the Rays did win 2-1, to one, Dennis. That is correct. Their bullpen fi finally came through because their bullpen has been struggling. Matter of fact, their bullpen, ERA-wise, is one of the worst five in baseball right now to start. Uh, that'll turn around. The Rays always have a solid bullpen. But they have been pretty weak so far. Um, all right, James, Shea would love to. He would love to. You just text me. You just text me and let me know when. Mornings, weekdays are probably the best time for him, like 8 o'clock, 8.30, 9, because he has to be at work at 11 o'clock. I'm about to go have dinner with Shay. We're going to go to our usual burger joint and get a couple of burgers for our dinner. So, so that's it, guys. A couple of showers on Monday. That's it. No cooler weather. Um, you see the drought conditions behind me. It's starting to dry out. That will continue. But at this point, oh, you're going to North Carolina next Tuesday. Gotcha. It is my treat night. And again, the folks at Hole in One Donuts in Tarpon, I had them make some um, treat night donuts and some stuff. So that's about it. So you guys have a great night. And coming next week, you know, you guys know we're a big cruising family. And um, we've been going off and on for years. Some people love it. Some people hate it. There is a new cruise line out of Tampa starting, I think, in the middle of June. It's uh, been going on in South Florida for a while. Margaritaville, I believe, Margaritaville on the sea, I think it's called, and they're going to start having sailings out of Tampa coming up in the middle of June. And I, I think they're pitching themselves as more as a budget cruise line, you know, maybe for people who either are looking for no frills or, you know, looking for, you know, maybe to see if they like it as opposed to the long seven day cruises. They're having the three and the four and the two day cruises out of Tampa. So that is something that's going to be coming up soon. I'm kind of intrigued about that myself just to see um, how that goes. It's smaller ships compared to the big massive Oasis ships that they have over on the East Coast because they can't have big ships in Tampa because they wouldn't clear the Skyway. I mean, if you didn't, if you wondered why they didn't have those big, those icons and all the other ones over on our area, it's because of the Skyway. If they were to have the port on the other side of the Skyway, and there was talk about that for a while, that, um, you know, they could. But at this point, that's why they don't. DPL Cruise. Oh, Jules, that would be fun, wouldn't it? Man, that would be a good time. Mike does that. Mike Boylan over Mike's weather page. You know, Mike's a good guy. I've known Mike for a decade. Mike does a Mike's weather page cruise over spring break. I think he does it on Royal, I believe. And, you know, has a bunch of people that go and they talk weather. And, you know, Mike is a, um, Mike likes to partake. Mike likes his beer. He's a, he is, he is, he is a beer guy. So it is a one big party. Whereas, you know, I mean, my vices are a little bit different. Uh, more like the Diet Dr. Pepper range, but, uh, but that would be fun, wouldn't it? That would be a lot of fun. We could probably get enough people to do it. We probably could. But for spring break next year, that's an interesting thought, huh? Ah, I don't know. Anyway, you guys have a great night. I got to go yell treat night, and um, we will see you on Tuesday's edition. If anything gets a little feisty on Monday, I doubt it will. I don't expect it will. But if it were to, uh, we would have a quick little DPL on Monday. But otherwise, we'll be back on Tuesday for the next edition. And by the way, guys, enjoy that new Taylor Swift drop at midnight, all right? You guys have a good night, see ya. We the lazy declare that we will recline when we feel inclined. And yes, we feel inclined. We answered our kids' questions all day. It's our time to prioritize, no priorities. Why? Because. We put in back-to-back -back doubles, so now we'll be putting in extra OT right here. We've checked off our to-do list. Now we're checking off our to-don't list. We the lazy are taking back lazy. By getting comfy on our Lazy Boy furniture. Lazy Boy. Long live the lazy.